affirmation today? All fear is gone right now. Where does fear live? Fear lives in the mind. So the best way to eradicate fear from your life is to take charge of your mind, and you do that with your thoughts. And of course in life we have transitory fear, which is reasonable. It's actually more of a cautionary thing. I mean, I'd be afraid to jump into a tank of, a tank of sharks and swim with them, but I, I think that's more just general caution than fear. But I'm talking about some of the things that we just walk through life with, all these fears. Um, and we often, we live with fear that we're not even aware of. We've just, over the years, accepted it so much, and we've adjusted our lives to avoid that which we fear. And this is limiting. This is a, a type of subconscious fear that limits us. And that can be a fear of, uh, a lot of people are afraid of entering a, a large room of, of strange people. I know I've had that concern myself. People can have a, a fear of elevators, a fear of, I mean, I, I'm not talking about diagnosable fear diseases because those are usually, you know, deeply rooted in something else. I'm talking about the type of fear that we live in that does prevent us from living the full and complete lives that we know that we're meant to live. And so I wanted to talk today about the things that we can do to eliminate and eradicate that fear from our life. And that starts with the mind, because we know that fear lives in the mind. And of course, in our fellowship, we know that the tools that we use to overcome challenges such as fear are the use of affirmations, such as all fear is gone right now. We have the power of prayer. We have the power of meditation. There are times when uh, an issue, a certain fear, could be so insurmountable but if we took 20 or 30 minutes aside, or, or even less, and meditated on it, and in that meditation, in your time with God, reason out why this fear is, why does it exist? And we certainly all live with them. I know um, yesterday I went to the Orange County Fair with a group of friends, and we were having a great time, and we went on to the Midway, where all the games were, and I was afraid. I had this fear, of course, it's not you know that paramount, but. I don't want to, you know, throw the ball and have it miss and then have everybody look at me and think, oh, look at that guy. Because, you know, the attendant can always win the game. And then you go to do it, and it's just impossible. But at a point in time, I realized, well, that's just silly. I doubt that, you know, especially after I'd seen other people had attempted and failed and they didn't turn into stones or statues or anything. So it obviously is something that can easily be overcome. But, uh, I mean, that's a small thing. Um, I also happened to uh, be watching television last night. Uh, this is a great example. I don't know, some of you will be familiar with uh, this old Betty Davis film, Now Voyager. Uh, she was this very oppressed woman. The, the family always uh, had her under thumbs. And uh, she went away and got some treatment and came back. And just at one point in the film when she's having a dispute with the mother, she turns and says, well, I'm not afraid. And then she stops and you see the light come on and she says, I'm not afraid. She's not afraid anymore of, because the fear was always that the family would eject her and she'd be penniless and suddenly the fear was gone. And it's amazing the fears that we walk around with, once they're gone, how much our life can change. Because doors open, things that limited us are no longer that limiting. When I was younger, I would have some challenges going into a room full of people. I'd, you know, cling to the wall. Of course, at a time growing and, you know, being in business and you have to be out there and you have to be, you know, interacting with people for potential business, you're sort of forced to. And, uh, you know, the first 2,800 times, it still isn't easy, but eventually you get over it because it's a necessity of life and you can get through it. And a lot of it is just in your mind, knowing in your mind and knowing that all fear can be overcome with the help of God, that we have the presence and the power of God to help us overcome fear. In fact, this morning I was reading in the book of Psalms, verse 27, chapter 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? And that's a great thing to walk around with, too, when we're talking about the tools to overcome these fears, is pick up the Bible and read, and especially go into the book of Psalms, the book of Proverbs. There's a lot of information, a lot of help in there. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? We know that the Lord is the strength of our life. If you have that in your heart, if you can hold on to that, 
then no, there is nothing to be afraid of. There's no one to be afraid of. And again, I'm not saying throw caution to the wind and go swimming with the sharks. Uh, again, that's transient fear. But, you know, don't be afraid of social situations or, uh, you know, I've known people in life who are terrified to drive on the freeway and they have to add an hour to everything they do because they've got to go on surface streets because they're terrified of the freeway. And I, you know, I don't know, maybe there was something that happened in their childhood. But again, this is a fear that is altering their life completely because, you know, time is such a valuable thing. And that's a small example. And I'm sure we all know people, or even in our own lives, we've had various fears that have held us back, that have kept us from living the full and complete lives that we know God has intended for us. So the first step about that is to understand that fear lives in our mind, we have absolute control over our mind. And what tools do we use for that? We use our affirmation, we use our prayer, we use meditation, um, and we take time, we read through the Bible, and also we look at people who are living through uh, this situation or circumstances. The person who does jump on the freeway every day and there's never any untoward event. By seeing that example, we can learn that it, it probably really isn't that bad. Or the people who are very, you know, social and gregarious you can go into any social situation and, and not have any concerns and, you know, they lead very successful lives. So by example, just like we try to live and be an example to other people with our new thought faith, we can in turn have a fear and look at people who walk through that every day and see that it's just, you know, it's a paper, it's a paper tiger. There's nothing to it because it's all in our mind. So as you're going through the week, our question is... What fears hold me back? And this may be a little bit of work. I mean, you may say, yeah, I'm afraid of spiders. I'm not going to go deal with spiders. And again, I think that's more of a cautionary thing than a, a, a fear that's unfounded. But you may have to think subconsciously, are there things that I don't do in life that I see other people doing? And if I could do that, there would be more joy in my life or certainly less anxiety or less restriction. So think about that as you're going through the week. What fears hold me back? And then when you identify them, again, realize they're all in the mind and you have the tools. You have the power of God in your life to overcome them, to eradicate them from your life and live a full, complete, happy life. And the good news is I do not have to live with fear. My faith in God will make all my fears subside right now. And remember, that's very important in our fellowship. You, when you make a statement, when you make an affirmation, claim that time frame right now. So as you're going through the week, again, and you identify your fears, just say to yourself, I know the good news is I do not have to live with fear. My faith in God will make all of my fears subside right now. Mm -hmm.